everyone and welcome to a new episode of the Ultimate Supply Chain Podcast, the podcast where we try and answer your burning questions and any issues around supply chains and logistics. Now, a few months ago, I had the opportunity to interview Professor Richard Wilding. We had a long conversation about the changes in the world and in particular, black swan events and their impact on logistics. We received some follow-up questions, so I am delighted today to have one of my colleagues and friends from LLP here at DHL Supply Chain. Paul Parry is the CCO for LLP. Welcome, Paul. Hi, Lou. How are you? I'm great, thank you. How are you? I'm good. Awesome. Look, before we jump right into the topic, can you just tell us a bit about yourself and, and how you ended up in logistics? Yeah, no, I've been in logistics all my professional career, actually. I started with one of our competitors briefly, and then I joined uh, what was back then Excel, uh, part of DHL now, of course, uh, 24 years ago, so quite some time ago, but I actually joined here in Spain, so I'm based out of Spain. I'm working in supply chain then for over 24 years uh, across all different sectors. I actually joined as part of our LLP team, one of our first LLPs here in DHL. Uh, and for the last few years, yeah, I've been helping uh, the, the, the global supply chain team with the development of the LLP product and supporting our customers with the implementation of that. Fantastic. So let's get into the detail. So what is LLP? What does the term mean? What does it stand for? And when we say LLP, what do we mean? Well, when we talk about LLP, we mean Lead Logistics Partner. So just to be clear then what that is, it's also called 4PL. A lot of our customers like to use the term 4PL. We interchange really across the two of them. But really, it's where we're working in partnership together with our customers to help them manage their supply chain. So our traditional business, we generally look at warehousing or transportation or certain value added services. In LLP, what we're actually doing is working alongside our customers and helping them manage the longer term, so the medium term, and then the day-to-day -day operation of the supply chain. So connecting all of the warehouses together, connecting all of the different pieces of oper uh, transport operation, and really putting together an orchestration of their supply chain on their behalf and really helping them with the things they have to do to make it work. So typically, when a customer comes to us, are they coming to us for one of those service lines, for one of those solutions, and then we start to talk wider, um, you know, about the wider opportunities, or are they coming with that that broader agenda in mind up front? It, it can be, a, again, it's both of those, but I mean, normally customers that we've worked with in the past, so they know as well, they are trusting us, right. we've, we've supported them perhaps on specific pieces of work around warehousing or transportation, and really they come to us with the wider challenges they have around supply chain. And they talk to us about how can we bring some of our broader capability to really bear and help them meet their challenges, and especially, as you know, with all of the changes that have gone on in supply chain, those challenges are no small feat at the moment. There's there's lots to go at at the moment with our customers. So yeah, a lot of them are coming to us uh, as known entities, with customers we've worked with for years, but also there are those customers that perhaps uh, don't know us so well and come to us with a for a fresh view on how we can help them manage their supply chain. How can we help them drive improvement, become more resilient, uh, and help them with their targets overall? So look, we started to touch there on customer needs. We're talking about resilience. Typically, what other challenges are they coming to us for LLP to help them resolve? And how are they measuring success? Well, it, there's a number of different challenges. I mean, the most immediate is how to now respond to the, if you like, the post-COVID world. How can they really get over all of the challenges that they saw during COVID and really become more resilient? So uh, customers, as we heard from the professor last week, are really looking to better prepare themselves for the next Black Swan event or the next COVID event, mm -hmm. the next disruption or dislocation they're going to see in the supply chain. So how can we prepare them for that? And a key part of all of that is visibility and control. It's something that's been going around in supply chain for many years about how we can get visibility of all of our material in the supply chain. How can we have an, one single point of truth? looking at mm. you know everything from inbound to manufacturing all the way through to delivery to final customer, where is our material? Uh, and it's surprising still in this day and age that a lot of customers still struggle to get a lot of basic visibility into their supply chain. So that's the thing to look at first and foremost. You know, Preparing yourself for the next, uh, let's say, disruption is knowing where your material is in the first instance. 
and then being able to prepare better. So a lot of our customers are switching around their supply chains in response to COVID, looking to maybe near shore, looking to maybe uh, change the way they distribute their finished products to make it more responsive to customer demand that has been fluctuating so much. And we can help them make some of those significant changes they need to do to their supply chains. So extra management lifting, uh, extra management support, extra management around the actual optimization of the supply chain and making it more robust. So again, helping them prepare uh, for the next event. Going on from that, I mean, we go on to support our customers in actually responding to those events. So, you know, the very latest area around the disruption we saw, for example, in the Suez Canal last year, we were able to give a lot of our existing customers a heads up before any of the other uh, providers uh, were able to support their customers because we were very much having visibility of what material was on the boats that were being held up, what was being uh, done to advance material, and then start to make you know uh, activities around those uh, supply chains to make sure that that issue, that single point of, of failure, was not a major failure for their entire supply chain. So reacting and responding to events when they come along, as well as helping them prepare, is really important for our customers as well. And, and the dealing with the issues of the day. And then recovery, uh, making sure that that single issue or event, whether it was like the in the Suez Canal, the closure of the canal, could be the closure of an airport. In the case of COVID these days, we continue to have uh, lockdowns periodically in China. You know, these are events that we can not necessarily predict, but we can really help our customers to respond and recover from in a much more proactive way, giving them the visibility and control that they've perhaps lacked in previous years. Brilliant. So look, Paul, you gave us a couple of really great examples there around how Black Swan events have changed the face of LLP. So are we providing different levels of service, different levels of support to our customer now than perhaps we were before COVID and those Black Swan events? Yeah, no, I think our customers now are really uh, looking at how they have to reorganize their supply chain. And that's not just from a physical point of view. So as I mentioned, uh, you know, changing the way they're, they're, they're sourcing material, perhaps nearshoring, but also how they are organizing themselves. You know, customers still very much organize their supply chains into silos. So whether that's inbound to manufacturing, distribution of finished goods within one region or another region, then maybe dealing with international separately. What we found with COVID, our customers at least, that they couldn't really deal with all of those silos in isolation. They really had to start to connect the dots. So customers are coming to us more and more. Uh, just talking to a life science customer the other day, they really can't afford now to deal with the international air and ocean separate from the domestic distribution. They are looking to see how we can help them really give them one version of that entire supply chain, one view of the visibility of inventory, transportation, and also the warehousing across their entire supply chain from inbound all the way to the finished uh, to the patient in this case. So really it's it's moving around, I would say, uh, what COVID has shown our customers is that they can't deal with these silos in isolation. It really has to be a joined up end-to-end -end piece of work for the customer. And so they have to change the way they organize. They have to look externally maybe for support from systems point of view. So again, the professor mentioned on one of the previous podcasts about how customers are looking elsewhere in partnership across organizations, across systems, and across lots of different areas of their business and all of those different challenges we are helping our customers with um, bringing our technology bringing our capability and really helping them deal with the challenges of uh, the post-covid world yeah. and paul can we just look a minute about what what characterizes a good llp customer for us and i don't mean a profitable customer what are the characteristics of a customer that that makes us think actually we could really help you in a different and more strategic way here yeah it's a really good question i mean uh, we do get obviously a lot of uh, discussions around customers around llp it, 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 a lot of customers especially at the moment are looking about how we could maybe help them they are looking for partnerships and for us what's important is that the customers already have made and got over the first step of, you know, we need to make a change. We need to make a significant change to our business. This is not some cosmetic re-engineering around the edges. This is about fundamental change within their business around having to really look at changing their approach to the supply chain. So we can really start with them from the bottom up and really make a fundamental change with them in partnership. That's going to take quite a lot of change management on the row. And they accept that and they work with us on that and they take uh, with ourselves 
across all of their different stakeholders through manufacturing, through sales, through marketing, and really help make that change possible. So a good customer for us is one that you know, recognizes the amount of change that needs to happen and is willing to work with us fundamentally across all of their stakeholders to make that change happen. And that's, that's really important to make this thing land, to make our uh, successful projects work is right across our customers' organizations. And um, what sort of roles are we speaking to in our customer organizations here? Um, I mean, typically we, we spend a lot of time with procurement. Are those the sort of people we're talking to or, or are we looking at different decision makers in the process here? Decision to work in partnership with an LLP or a 4PL in this case is a quite a strategic decision for our customers. So it does tend to sit with the, you know, with the supply chain uh, lead at the very global level or the chief supply chain officer, if you like. And they are the people that really are taking the decisions to say, look, hey, you know, we've gone through uh, all of the disruptions that we've seen in the last few years. It's we can't afford to do that again. And again, you know, speaking to, uh, I think in this case, uh, a company in the energy industry, you know, they really went through quite a lot of challenges during uh, the past two years. And they've really recognized that they can't go through the same again if they were to be confronted again with the same challenges. They really have to do things differently. So. They are talking to us at the most senior level. They, uh, they even have a transformation office. They have as well the supply chain office. So they really understand that they need to change uh, their business model. So we are engaged in a quite a high level. Procurement do get involved. This is about you know customers going out and they are very stringent on that, but it is very much about a strategic decision from our customers. So very important. Amazing. And one of the other things I was talking to, to the professor about is you know the fact that my mum now knows what a supply chain is. That I mean, that didn't happen four years ago. People are s- selecting careers in supply right. chain when, you know, perhaps 10, 20 years ago, it was something you, you evolved into or you fell into by virtue of something else. What does the supply chain professional of the future look like in the context of the LLP need? Um, I think, as you said, the, the importance has so much more in, increased during the last few years. I think it's become, you know, byword on everybody's lips of all of the different things that are challenging the world now. It's not just something that happens in the background uh, silently and, and nobody really realizes how material gets on the shelf or how goods are served uh, to your door. It really is, you know, a, a significant part of our everyday life that really people have been switched on to with all the disruptions that have come about. So I think from an LLP point of view, you know, we are really looking now, not just at how we can better operate within the status quo, perhaps a warehouse or improve the way we uh, fill our vehicles for our customers on transportation, but it's really about how we can help our customers improve their wider supply chain. And that is a slightly different skill set from our point of view within DHL. We have been working with customers in partnership for a while, but you know, we are now looking more and more about how we can grow and support our customers on the wider supply chain, and that's slightly different. Uh, supporting them with inventory management, supporting them with the wider connectivity between transportation, warehousing, and helping them deal with all of those different optimization questions and management questions on a day to day. Yeah, no, I completely get it. Um, you know, we, we could do a whole podcast series on the, the need for great interpretation of data and analytics, but I'm based on what you said, that is going to play such a critical role here as we seek to be predictive and forecasting about the future of our customers' businesses and and where they might go. Yeah. No, I mean, analytics is going to be one of the key things that we look for going forward. I think, you know, in the overall makeup of our own teams here, if we look maybe only two years ago, three years ago, you know, the number of analytics staff that we had on our LLP teams was limited. Uh, it was a very important part of what we do. We do give our customers a great overview of their business, but it was very much uh, about reporting on what had happened. What we very much now are getting into and what we're working with our customers on is uh, what is going to happen? How can we use the forecasting? How can we use our own sort of large data that we get from the customers, the big data, to really predict what's going to happen in the near future, but also what's going to happen you know, next year? What come scenarios and using things like digital twins to run very quick, Uh, what ifs around what will or perhaps happen next year if this happens or if that happens if this black swan comes if we get a a flock of black swans what is going to happen to their supply chain uh in the near future and really help them prepare for that again prepare respond and recover 
from any of those potential issues that they're going to get. So analytics is going to be definitely fundamental. Uh, analysts to support that work is going to be really important to our own uh, drive for recruitment. And also then, yeah, supporting our customers so they don't have to uh, with all of that kind of knowledge and capability. So, Paul, if the, if the tables were turned and if you were a customer looking for an LLP partner, what would you be looking for? So, no, that's a really good question, Lou. I think it's it's super important that our customers don't necessarily just look at this as a transactional operation, as we often see on some of our more uh, traditional business. It is about partnership. It is about getting that cultural fit. It is about making sure that our objectives are fully aligned to our customers' objectives. And beyond that, you know, it's... We've been doing this quite a few years. We understand and we recognize how challenging it can be. There is no quick fix for a lot of our customers. And it is very much, to to coin a cliche, it is a journey. And so we've been on many of those journeys with our customers over the years. And we really like to work closely with our customers at a strategic level to help make that journey for them the painless as possible and reach their objectives as soon as possible. So this is not always about necessarily having the right assets in the right place or having perhaps the right vehicles and the right place, as we would see with maybe some of our more traditional business. It's about having the right knowledge and human capital, if you like, as well as then the, the digital technical capabilities as well to make it happen. So it is a little bit different. And um, yeah, educating and working with our customers on the procurement process around 4PLLP is something that we work, we spend a lot of time on. Sure. And are you seeing trends in terms of which sort of customers come to us for LLP solutions, Paul? I mean, are some sectors ahead of the game? Or are some sectors feeling the pinch faster than others? Yeah, I think it's it's really interesting. Actually, you know, we've we started uh, all those many years ago, actually, within automotive. Uh, automotive really recognized quite early on that uh, perhaps supply chain wasn't something that was uniquely their own core competency. I really look to ourselves for support and capability and and systems to help them manage their supply chains. And that really moved quite quickly then to some of the other areas around engineering and manufacturing, and where we have a lot of great LLP relationships with our customers in that space. But more and more, we're seeing definitely life science are changing. I mean, life science has been put under a huge amount of pressure in the last uh, two years. And so they are responding very much to looking to see how 4PLs can help them. Where is the competency? Where is the capability? And what are the gaps? So, yeah, looking about how they can look to a DHL to help with some of their gaps. Sure. Um, Listen, what I'm hearing is this isn't a transactional relationship. This is a partnership. It's a long term relationship and it's founded on trust. I mean, if you think about some of the items that we're going to have to share, some of the values that you have to share to make this work, some of the data that we have to share. The foundations here are entirely different, aren't they? Yeah, no, the, you know, it really comes down to that, making sure that we've got a single controlled focus on what our objectives are. It's a joint objective. We can only get there by working together. It is quite fundamentally a different relationship that we need to have with the customer. This is not about providing a service in line with a statement of work that is very uh, mature and controlled and will stay relatively stable, as perhaps we see in some of our traditional business. This is quite a dynamic environment where we're trying to bring about quite a significant change. A lot of what we need to know as inputs to that change are not always known by our customer or by uh, all of the stakeholders in our customers. So we're collecting a lot of information from across the organization to bring about that change, to bring about a redesign, and it requires a lot of trust. And so our customers trust us they, they understand our experience. We also trust them with supporting us and providing the right engagement across the organization and really making sure that we work together to reach that objective. And, and it's not you know, about you should have done this or we should have done that or he hasn't done this. It's very much about we uh, across the team really can work together to make sure that we bring uh, a change and a benefit for our customer. So Paul, here comes the $50 million question. What's the future for LLP? Uh, the future is bright, I would say. I mean, as I say, the, the increasing significance of supply chain with our customers, with our stakeholders, you know, really means that we are getting more and more interest around looking at our capability. The future really is, is what's driving that. You know, the focus, as we've discussed a little bit already around end-to-end, helping customers break down silos across their organizations. 
using analytics, so helping them with you know the increasing pace of digitalization within supply chains. So really looking at about how our own analytics, our own data scientists can really help them get better insights, become more predictive, and also in the end become prescriptive and bring around automation is really key to us uh, and key to our customers and really about driving the future of LRP. And finally, as well, perhaps most importantly, is around our customers' ESG agenda. Our customers have really now committed a lot to net zero. Uh, maybe that's in 10 or 20 years' time, but they're really having to, to bring around an agenda and a change about how they measure their environmental impact, looking at the E of the ESG. How do they measure that? How do they improve that? How are they going to do that across their supply chain globally? You know, they're really needing a lot of support from ourselves to make that happen uh, and really bring about a change and an improvement. It's not easy. Uh, it's going to require quite a lot of uh, visibility, a lot of understanding about what's driving CO2 uh, within their supply chain, and then a lot of active management to help drive that down and mitigate that. And there's also then the, the compliance part as well of ESG. You know, a lot of our customers are finding it more and more tricky to navigate their way through the global uh, compliance challenges that they have today. Uh, so many more different trade barriers that are popping up here, there and everywhere. And really navigating through that is also critical as well to our customers more and more. So, yeah, there's a lot of things to do, not just around uh, analytics and digitalization, transformation end to end, but also around ESG, where customers are really looking for our support in LLP. Normally at the end of our podcast, I ask my guests to give us an example of how we've connected people and improved lives. Can you give us an example of that for LLP? Yeah, sure. I think there's quite a few examples across LLP. Uh, perhaps the most pertinent is, you know, in North America, we helped one of our biggest customers deliver vaccines across uh, all of the region, really, for COVID. You know, it was fundamental to quickly turn on that supply chain. We were able to respond mm. to, that, to that immediate crisis and really help them uh, deliver that over the long term. Uh, also for another customer, Actually, in automotive, we were able to help them move machinery around the world and start to manufacture masks instead of producing cars or car seats. In this case, you know, they were able oh, to wow. turn some of that mach machinery into actually helping manufacture masks for their own workforce and for that, uh, you know, the overall meet some of the overall demand for masks in the world. So, yeah, uh, being connected, being global, working across our customers' supply chains means we are very much uh, connected and, and improving lives. So a great example of LLP delivering right to the heart of our brand promise. Paul, that ESNG example is a really good one in terms of how we can add value to customers other than cost out. I mean, it's clear that what they're coming for is that expertise and experience that they won't have within their own businesses. You know, they want a partner that has worked across a number of regions and a number of sectors and, in, and can bring the, the wealth of knowledge that comes with that to, to help them connect people and improve lives. Exactly, exactly. No, it's, it's, I think, the point that we will pick up on as we go forward more and more with our customers. Yeah? Brilliant. Thanks so much for joining me today, Paul. It's been really fascinating to get into the nitty gritty of LLP and what it means today and what it might mean in the future. Well, thank you, Lou. It's a pleasure. Thanks all for listening. I hope this episode has given you the insight that some of you asked for following that conversation with Professor Wilding. LLP is a fascinating subject and I'm sure it's one that we'll return to in the future. Don't forget to subscribe and share episodes. If you go to our page for the podcast, you can also suggest guests and topics that you'd like us to cover in the future. Can't wait to hear from you and thanks again for listening.